Hi, I'm Paul. We're going to look at Shopify. They just completed a 10 for one stock split. Now, before we go further, I want you guys to know we made two videos about Shopify in the last two years. One was on December 16th, 2020. The stock after adjusting for the split was selling about $100. I said I couldn't even touch the stock because it had to grow 20% a year for 15 years and have higher margins to even justify that price back then. 135 billion. Uh -huh. Price to sales, 54. Price to earnings, 701. Do we need to go any further? PE -E of 700? PE of 700. It made $196 million last, in the last 12 months, guys. 196 million bucks, it's selling for $134 billion. I think you almost made $196 million yeah, in the last 12 months, exactly. Paul. Exactly. And you're not, are you, what, what, you're not worth $135 billion. No, I'm not. Time. Guys, I don't think we need to go any further. I hate to break it to you. I mean, they got great margin. They got great margins. Really awesome. But this has got to come down so much. It's ridiculous. How much revenue have to grow by for the next 10 years to justify today's price? Not 10 years from now's price, today's price. And that's where I have an issue with growth investing. Everybody always puts more value on growth. When you break it down to the numbers, you sit there and say, is this a probable outcome? 20% per year is okay. It's a small company. It could grow 20% a year all day. I'm fine with that. Then it's worth what it's worth today at a 30 p. Then in February of this year, the stock had fallen. Well, from that point, it went from $100 to 176 And the average person out there would say, Paul, look, you were wrong. And I said, no, I'm not. Now, February 10th, 2022, just six months ago, five months ago, it was at it had fallen to 90 bucks. We did another analysis of it. I said, I, I don't I see it. It was high of 1763 in the last year. And it was wow. recently as low as 780. And it's currently at 872. So again, wow. let's go to the eight pillars. I mean, almost a thousand times free cash flow over the last five years. Oh 162 my. times the five year earnings. Okay. That's pretty sick. That income growth. I mean, guys, this is a 40%. Look at this, guys. Shares outstanding have increased 40%. I'm gonna really want to accentuate this. For those of you new to the channel, shares outstanding are the silent killer of investing, of companies. They're diluting you. If a company has 10 shares outstanding, and you own one, you own 10% of the business, one out of 10. If they issue two more shares, there are now 12 shares outstanding, but you still own one, and now you own one out of 12 shares, which is 8.33%. So you went from getting 10% of the profit to getting 8.33% of the profit, just by issuing shares. That's dilution. In this situation, they had 10 shares, and now they have 14, and you still own one. Major dilution. We're on 10% down to six and a half, seven percent so guys, I look at these 52 week lows. Let me show you where it's at today, guys. So if you, if you have our software, if you're a subscriber of our software, please follow along, go to the eight pillars, type in Shopify. Guys, look at it now. It's at $33 a share. It hit a low of $29 per share just recently. Guys, in the long run, companies will go to what's fundamentally there. Okay, their sales are up since February, December of 2020. Their profits up, yet the stock is down. How much? 70% since 2020, since December 2020, and what is that? 80% since the peak of this last year, back in November or December. So, what does this mean, guys? I cannot stress this enough. When you're buying a stock. When you're buying a stock, you're buying a piece of a business. If you're new to this channel, you've probably heard that before from Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Seth Klarman, every single Howard Marks, every single value investor of all time. If this makes sense to you, stay on with the video, subscribe to the channel. You're going to learn a lot more. It sounds repetitive, but investing is simple, but it's not easy. Okay, most of the hard part is emotional. You see a stock go from 100 to 176. You see some guy on the internet in a some sort of white t-shirt saying, don't buy this stock, and it goes to 176. You're like, this guy's an idiot. But now it's at 30 bucks. And I think there's gonna be a lot more pain for companies like this. So let's go analyze the company because the other thing I remind you, Stock splits don't make the, the company cheaper. It makes the nominal price of the shares lower, allowing more people to buy more shares because everybody would rather buy 1,000 shares than 100 shares. Everybody would rather buy 100 shares than 10 shares. It's a complete manipulation. It's basically marketing. That's okay. Google's doing it on July 15th. Amazon did it. Tesla's done it. A lot of companies do it to bring the price down for the average investor to be able to buy more shares and spur some more demand. So guys, let's look at our eight pillar process to understand Shopify. Remember, the fundamentals have stayed the same even after the stock split. So pillar number one, we want the 10-year PE ratio to be under 22.5. On the main page of our software, 
five-year PE, 143. Still expensive. Pillar number two, we want the five-year return on invested capital to be greater than 9%. 1.2%. So this basically means they're not doing a good job of getting a return on the money that's invested in the business through debt and equity. So that's a problem. Pillar number three, we want to see revenue growth over the last five years. So we scroll to the top, go to our income statement, and very simply, five years ago, $760 million in revenue. Last year, 4.83. Check mark there. Now, keep in mind, in the year that they were at 100, that I said it was overpriced, their sales were around, call it $2.5 billion in that previous year. Now they're at 4.8, and the stock has fallen how much, 70% from that point after going up 70 more percent. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at a stock saying, oh my God, the growth is huge. Pillar number four, we want net income growth over the last five years. So we're going to stay on the income statement, scroll down. Five years ago, they lost 42 million. Last year, they made 181 million. The previous year, they made 1.6 billion. There must've been something in there that was a huge, um, a huge jump. Okay, pillar number five, We want shares outstanding decrease. And guys, this is a silent killer investing. When a company is increasing its shares, it is diluting you as an owner. It is now taking all the revenue and profit and giving it, splitting it up amongst more people. If a company has 10 shares outstanding and you own one, you own 10% of the business, one out of 10. If they issue two more shares, you still own one share, but now it's split amongst 12 owners and not one owner. Now you own 8.33% of the business versus 10%. So you're getting diluted. So we scroll to the bottom of our income statement and we look at the end of year six, 902 million. Last year, currently 1.26 billion. So they're diluting people. Pillar number six, we look at the debt, the long-term liability of the company because debt works for companies the way it works for you personally. The more debt you have, the more likely you are to not have a good time if times get tough. So we go back to the main page and we take our five-year average free cash flow, 145 million, right here on the main page. We multiply it by five and that's roughly 740, 700, call it $725 million. So we want their long-term liabilities to be under 725 million. So we go to the balance sheet. We go all the way to the bottom. Long-term liabilities, 1.36 billion. So that's the next. Now keep in mind, guys, this is a company that's growing fast and they're reinvesting back in themselves. So their free cash flow number will be lower than most. So this one doesn't worry me as much, but it's still a concern. Now pillar seven and eight have to do with free cash flow. Free cash flow is the lifeblood of the business. It is calculated by taking your cash from operations and deducting your capital expenditures. You can do one of five things with free cash flow. You can buy back shares, pay down debt, pay dividends, invest in yourself, and make acquisitions. You can do all five, none of them. You can do whatever combination you want. So we go to the cash flow statement. And because we love our users so much, we added this line to do the math for you. So five years ago, they lost 30 million in free cash flow. Last year they made 250. That's a check mark. So they have growing free cash flow. And the final pillar works a lot like PE. We take the five years of average free cash flow, 145, and we multiply it by 22.5. And we get so 290, so 2.9 billion plus 290 is 3.2 and a half, 3.3 billion dollars. So we want the market cap to be roughly 3.3 billion. So go back to your main page or less. And guys, it's 44 billion. That's an X. So we do all this math for you on our eight pillars tab. And there's a lot of X's here, as you can see. They have some good things, but it's mostly bad stuff. So guys, does this mean you shouldn't buy Shopify? Not necessarily. Just remember, it's a small but fast growing company. If you had two companies that are exactly the same, one's growing 100% a year and one's growing zero, which one will you pay more for? Obviously the one growing 100% per year. But history has shown, study after study has shown that when they go back in time with 2020 vision, knowing exactly what happened, every, even the companies that hit the growth targets they expected, people overpaid for that growth. People always love overpaying for growth. Don't fall for that same trap. This is why you're here. You're here to learn. 
And the more you learn, the more you know, the less you will fear. If you understand what makes Shopify tick and you understand what makes a company's stock go up, you won't be fearful when the stock falls 75, 80%. So that's what we're here to teach you, okay? So let's go to the most exciting part of our software, the stock analyzer tool. This allows you, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. This allows you to make assumptions about the future because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. And it tells you what you should pay for the company based on that cash flow and earnings analysis. Okay. So I always pick a 10 year analysis. Shopify is doing great things. So let's be conservative. Let's go at 10, 20, and 30% revenue growth. Just to let you know what 30% revenue growth means for the next 10 years. This is what it actually means 1.3 to the power of 10 times 4.5 4.5 billion that they did in revenue last year. That would take it to 62 billion in revenue in 10 years. So your first question is is that possible? Is it possible that 10 years from now Shopify is doing 62 billion dollars in revenue? I don't know. I have no idea. 10% revenue growth for the next 10 years times to the times 4.5 is 11 billion. That seems pretty conservative. So I like that number. Profit margin. Now for profit margin, um, this is all over the board. So it's hard to make an estimate. Usually what we have here is a company that's been around for so long and the profit margin numbers are usually pretty accurate. But let's go conservative at 5%, middle of 12% and a high of 20%. Free cash flow margin. Let's do the exact same thing. PE. Now, guys, the bigger and bigger the company go- goes, the smaller, lower and lower the PE should be. So I would disregard this 243 one year PE and the 165 price of free cash flow. I'm going to go 15, 20, and 25. And same with free cash flow. Now, desired annual return, I usually pick 12.5%. The reason for that is that you can get 9 or 10% by investing in a market based ETF. So in order to get margin of safety and to justify buying an individual stock, you got to go higher. But in this case, guys, we had a lot of unknowns up here. I have no idea what's going on up here. I'm making really big guesses. So I'm going to go 15% because I want a bigger return for my money investing in Shopify. I hit the analyze button. The stock is currently at 34 bucks. Look at this wide range, $3 to $81. You might sit there and say, that's insane. That's the point. We don't know where it's going to end up being because there is no evidence in the past. What you need to do is figure out, okay, I'm going to set a price target for myself for 1992. So the software is going to notify me by email and text and on the software to sit there and when it hit 1992 to look at it. But my goal is, is this 20% revenue growth number reasonable? Is 12% profit margin reasonable? Is If this whole entire thing right here is reasonable, then I'm going to buy it at 20 bucks. But the one thing I don't like here is the PE and the price of free cash flow. Because I don't think any mature company doing whatever 20% a year of growth is on this company probably takes it to $30 billion or somewhere around there. I don't think it's reasonable for a company with $30 billion in revenue to have a 20 PE. Could it be wrong? Absolutely, I could be wrong. Absolutely, I could be wrong. But again, is it possible? Sure. Is it probable? That's the question you ask yourself. So right here, like Shopify, it's just too much unknown. I don't understand. But let's go put in my normal 12.5% return. How does it change these numbers? Not by much, guys. Four bucks, 24 bucks, 100 bucks. So if you think Shopify is going to do everything here on the right side, including having a 25 PE 10 years from now, then yeah, do your research. You're buying it all. It's a screaming value play. I don't necessarily think that. If you haven't seen our full eight pillars explanation, please click here for the next video because remember, the more you know, the less you fear. Thank you very much.